Oh, the happiest hour. Hey, thank you so much for joining me again today on the happiest hour. I'm Brendan Lemon. I'm the host of the show. Uh, you know that because you're following me on uh, <laughs> Facebook or, or YouTube. I hope that you did. Yeah, right. Or Twitch or any of these other. What am I? I don't know where I'm live streaming today, man. Uh, it's me. It's Brendan. It's your Midwest dad. And uh, let's bring them on here. Why not? Uh, before we do, before we before we jump into the show, I just want to say I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you're staying. I uh, hope you're staying healthy. I hope you're staying uh, outside of Corona's way. I got my drink here. Cheers. Uh, we got this here's a mix of kombucha and the show today brought to you once again by Trader Joe's blended scotch whiskey for ten dollars. Yes, even ten dollars. You can forget your problems of coronavirus. And go on the uh, walkway to a less healthy liver. Thank you so much, Trader Joe's. Uh, as always, bl- joining me on the show, please give it up for Lancey Joe, my, uh, my 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 partner in crime here on the show. Uh, God damn it. There we go. Hey, Lancey, how you doing? We got you on here live. Hey, Brendan. You're looking chipper, man. You're looking like, by the way, happy birthday, Lancey. Why, why thank you, Brendan. I appreciate it. Uh, I saw Laura did some nice things for you. She posted some nice things about you uh, today. She yeah, said, I saw uh, that. She said, you saw that. <laughs> she posted, um, I don't think there's anyone I'd rather be in uh, quarantine for months with. And I thought, that's that's about the nicest thing anybody could say right now about yeah. anybody. <laughs> that's the ultimate compliment uh, during these trying times. These tr- These troubling, difficult times. You been outside lately, man? Have you been have you been out? I saw you with I, your your Bulls jersey on by the way, man. You're looking you're looking pretty good. You're looking like uh somehow you're still getting push-ups in. <laughs> That's because uh my body fat has shrunk to zero since I'm a, a vegan. Since you're uh, a vegan and also uh everybody's you know can't buy groceries very well right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh so yeah, I'm just not eating. That's the strategy. <laughs> um so uh yeah. Yeah, it's it's been fun. It's been a fun day. Thanks thanks. It's it's good to see you. Uh oh, how wow. are you feeling? Hey, man. I'm doing okay. I feel like I uh, I wish I could be there to celebrate your birthday in person, you know, in right. the way that we usually do, which is bombing at open mics. Right. Right. Um <laughs> instead we we have to find a virtual way to bomb. <laughs> you know, I'm used to not having laughter when I talk, so this is perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're going to be so good at, at delivering uh, sentences without laughter afterwards after <laughs> just talking to no one. <laughs> just, everybody, nobody's going to know what to do when comedy resumes a year from now. Like, <laughs> this is exact. Nobody knows. I mean, like this is uh, what Joe Rogan was talking about this the other day. There's people who think that it could be up to an entire year before anybody's like normally going can be allowed to go out to to shows and stuff and like i just blows my mind that that's it that could actually be the case which is yeah. a year from now let's aim for that a year from now we're gonna have a packed house for your birthday okay that sounds good uh i think everybody's gonna return to comedy and be like man our lives are really together now what's going on <laughs> And you How can't could we get, mess this up? If you're a comedian, you can't get less employed. You know what I mean? Like you're <laughs> you're already not employed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll we'll all be having healthy eating habits, sleep schedules, everything's lined up correctly, and then we'll go back to comedy and and just just flush it all back down the drain again. Well, I feel like uh, I feel like I'm kind of already on that path. Uh, I mean, with this. Um, yeah. So, what'd you say? You're drinking kombucha today? I got kombucha. I got some kombucha today. I've mixed in some uh, Trader Joe's blended Scotch whiskey. Our show today brought to you by Trader Joe's blended Scotch whiskey. Yes, even you can taste the flavors of the Drunk Highlands Trader Joe's Scotch <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> I really and hope, the, I'm really hoping to get that celebrity endorsement money. It'll definitely happen. It's going to be great. It, uh, I would take if I was going to drink scotch, I would take your advice on it. Thanks, man. I mean, I look like I'm I I'm looking the most Midwest dad I've ever looked. I look like I've got to have a I, I look like I've been angry at a child all day. <laughs> like I, but you're 
but you're trying to be uh, constructive with your criticism. So you Bobby, can't really look, like... We really need to find an outlet where Bobby can shine, where he can really... <laughs> He can take his energy in a direction that's, you know, maybe the theater is a place for him, you know? Maybe there's a program. You know, I was listening to NPR earlier, and they, they were talking about that kids need this. Have you listened to uh, National Public Radio? There was a great, on. it was on um, Planet Money. There was a really great. <laughs> Kai Rizdal had some good ideas. About... Kai Rizdal. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I really enjoy. I heard an interview with him on Fresh Air the other day, and <laughs> I look like a guy who, unironically, uh, with a hundred percent sincerity, goes, "You know, I read in the Atlantic the other day that." <laughs> yes. <laughs> I decided to go full flannel today. You can see this. This is this is uh, this is an Amazon uh, essential, Amazon basic special right here. <laughs> The key to a great flannel, truly, is buying something that you know every other white dude in your office also has. Yeah, like I've never, I don't think I've ever had a flannel shirt. Are you serious? You've yeah. never had a flannel shirt, Lance? Uh, uh-uh. uh, no. Well, somebody's uh. got. It's your birthday, buddy. <laughs> Amazon me a flannel shirt, please. <laughs> somebody, somebody, somebody watching the show, please send a flannel shirt to Lancey Joe. I just that it seems sacrilegious to me that you wouldn't have one. Yeah, that's that's the difference between the northern Louisiana and actual Louisiana is that <laughs> there's no no flannel shirts down down there. Oh my, the Louisiana of the north. Uh, Ryan, so I should do some shout outs by the way. Ryan Weiner is a real person who said hello and is on this. Uh, also, Adam Gold, great. Looking forward to talking with you this Friday, man. Uh, just wanted to get the uh, the pleasantries out of the way with our with our audience. Um, Lancey, you got big birthday plans, man. Aside, you just you you having dinner with Laura? You like what do you got going on? Going uh, out, going Laura, out somewhere? Actually, we did go to. Um, we supported small business today, so we went over to Milk and Honey uh, over on Division. Yeah. Division Street and I like I like going and eating there and hanging out normally. Uh but uh they've got good food either way, so go 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 buy, get some to go food from there. Go yeah. buy your favorite places and just get some to go food. Yeah, I'm curious if you're in the in the show notes in the comments section here, if you could post if you've been out to a place, if you not been out, but if you've gotten takeout uh, from your favorite places while you've been in quarantine, you know, the social distancing, I'd really like to know. I did that for the first time over the weekend. Uh, we got uh, Indian food, which with my beard, you can imagine how challenging that was. Uh, <laughs> it was like, it was like, uh, it, it was an entire evening, basically, of difficulties. But it was wonderful. I love Indian food. And we got it from this uh, place that we love going to, this Tandoor Char House in Chicago. It's a wonderful joint. And it was weird because I thought this is the first time I've been. And then we tried to get another takeout over the weekend and it didn't work out at all because the place was closed. Like they, 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 they weren't closed period. They were just like for until further notice, we're not doing any of this. And that's got to affect like every, that's got, I mean, every place obviously is affected. So it's yeah. weird. I'm just wondering how much people are normally doing this. We talked to, talked to some friends over the weekend in Boulder, Colorado, they were like, "Oh yeah, we order takeout like every almost every night now because we just want to keep these businesses running," which I think is really nice. Yeah, really nice, honestly. Yeah, um, I'm just curious. So if you, if you're, uh, you know, Marion Bentley Fuller or Mark Myers or Adam Gold or anybody watching this, I'm just curious how often you guys go ahead and comment in the in the in the comment section how often you guys are watching. Um, well, I, I mean, bad watching, the other... goodness, <laughs> ordering. The other day we went, um, and I was like, yeah, let's, let's, I'm just going to get something. I was feeling a little hungry and we were out and we went to Burger King and I'm like, ah, like uh, Burger King's not the one hurting for this right now. Yeah. I uh, have a feeling they're probably doing all right. <laughs> but that being said though, they do have the impossible burger, which me being a vegan and that helps. Uh, I, I went out when that came out. Uh, Gloria and I went out to go get it 
And we went on like a hunt around Chicago to go find that Impossible Burger. Yeah. It's great, man. At the place that I work uh, on a normal basis, uh, Burger Bar, there's yeah. one uh, at like North and Clybourne. There's also one in the, the South Loop. Mm-hmm. And uh, they've got a really good Impossible Burger. So it, order there for sure. Order there for sure. So maybe uh, me and my cohorts will have a job when uh, when this all comes back. Lancey had one birthday wish, and it's for you to go get a burger from Burger Bar to keep it yeah. up for him. I, I'm interested in the Impossible Burger, but I'm I'm also sort of interested in the Improbable Burger, which is... <laughs> A burger composed only of prime numbers, and <laughs> it's did, very difficult to get. Did you hear me get. say that joke last night? No, did you say that? Yeah. What? Yeah, I had Yoni Yoni Heisler on my show last night. Oh boy, the two of you guys—that really must have spun off into outer space. Uh, you still can you see me? Yeah, yeah, okay. you're right there. I got you. Uh, yeah, so. The joke was is that I hate the Impossible Burger because uh, it put my granddad out of business. He invented the Improbable Burger. He never <laughs> saw this coming. Oh my gosh! Oh, Dan Nelson just told me uh, every every three nights, but Grubhub and DoorDash kind of suck. They put the food on the wrong door. Yeah, it was weird when we ordered this uh, Indian food. They brought the food over and just left it outside. Like they just left it, and the guy messaged and he was like, "Yeah, we can't." We can't do any face to face contact. I was like, like it was weird. Like they were leaving, like a, you know, like a baby at a nunnery or something, just like knocking and running away. <laughs> like it was the weirdest. Now we can't look at you. I don't know. You what, know what I mean? I was I was gonna ask you earlier. Uh, that first of all, great joke just then. Baby nunnery, love baby it. Baby nunnery, terrific joke. Terrific. Let me tell tremendous. you, tremendous joke. Tremendous. <laughs> it was the best. Some people say it was a good joke. I think it was the best joke. <laughs> but I was going to ask you, uh, from a Midwestern pr- dad's perspective, uh, what kind of car does a Midwestern dad, w- what would he drive? Oh, he drives a he drives an SUV or he drives a minivan. Okay. He drives nice. a minivan, mostly. Yeah, uh, so like a... Or a Prius. It's one of those three. Oh, yeah, Priuses. A Prii. Yeah, one of the Prii. <laughs> <laughs> a Prius sounds like the other class in Roman society. There was like the patricians, there was the plebeians, and then there was the Prii. <laughs> I thought it was some sort of bacteria in your stomach that caused ulcers. <laughs> you can see here the you can see you can see here, doctor, this is where the Prius infection occurs. Right? <laughs> it's an extremely efficient uh and and used a lot for i'll tell you i bet a lot of doordash people drive those B- oh, drive pre eyes mm-hmm. <laughs> pre eyes pre i uh uh i i <laughs> i don't even know where to go from here man <laughs> well this is the portion of the show where we just tinker with the english language that's true <laughs> That's true. We should make it an official section, actually. What we should do is get your suggestions of strange and esoteric words for Lancey and I to bat back and forth like a couple of Oxford students in the 16th century. Just how many goofy ideas can we play tennis with over the internet for your entertainment? You paid so much for this, audience. You paid so much money to show up here today. Yeah, if you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. Twice double your money back, in fact. What do you got yeah. to do? What do you? What better? Let me ask you this, audience. What better do you have to do while you're waiting for DoorDash to leave your food at a neighbor's door? <laughs> what, what, better, what better do you have? Deal with your pre-eye infection? No. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a. It sounds a lot like a pre. I keep thinking this is why this is getting down this esoteric rabbit hole. It sounds like me saying a pre. Like pre-eye sounds like a priori from philosophy class <laughs> which i'm teaching this semester at your local community college <laughs> are you really no i'd like to look like it though oh i was like oh man i want to take that class <laughs> it would be a ba- very bizarre mix of history and philosophy that should be actually should be my entertaining online course is me talking about the history of ideas 
and like <laughs> that sounds like, actually sounds like fun now that I'm talking about it. Yeah, I gotta write that down. Once we get past this pr- Prius uh pan- pandemic, we're gonna have to talk about the history of ideas on the happiest hour. Uh, where should we start, Lancey? What what didn't we wait? We talked about this on your show that there should be you and I should just talk about. You should just ask me questions about history or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we could do uh, we could do that where I I'm, I'll ask you questions about history and and we'll add the philosophy section. I'm curious while we're talking here. I'm curious what happened in the world on this day, your birthday. I'm going to go to Wikipedia before we pull on our guest Josh Otusanya, who I'm very excited to have on the show. It's uh, Queen Elizabeth's birthday. Shut up. Are you serious? Yeah, it's the Queen of England and the King of Chicago Comedy on the same day. <laughs> let's let's see. Let's uh, hold on. There's got to be on this day. Oh, here we go. Uh well, first of all, it's Gro- it's Grunation Day, which is a Rastafarian holiday. So all for all of you Rasta's watching the show. You shouldn't be because it's a ho- holiday, apparently. <laughs> this is I know a, you have a huge Rastafarian following. I got a big man, a huge Rasta. <laughs> it's right after 420, 421. Maybe that's why 420 is such a, ho- a holiday uh, for weed smokers, is that the 421 is some, you know, sec- the, apparently the second biggest Rastafarian holiday. Mm. I think that means that you're the Rasta uh, Messiah, actually. You should check into that. They might be. They might be. Uh, okay, in 1950, so, so here's some pretty big stuff. Uh, 1836, forces of the Republic of Texas, led by Sam Houston, defeated Mexican troop general Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana in the Battle of San Jacinto. That's, uh, that's pretty... Houston. <laughs> That's pronounced Houston. Sam Houston. <laughs> at the We're battle, from New York. Come yeah. on. I'm at walking the, here. At the Battle of Lafayette and Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my uh, what, gosh. <laughs> what was that Gangs of New York where it starts out and it's like, it's that part of, like, that's that bloody, bloody battle. And the people were so pissed because they were paying, uh, Twenty three hundred dollars in rent a month, and it was like a shitty townhouse. It was a terrible townhouse in the eighteen sixties. <laughs> yeah, built out of all sheet metal. Yeah, it was just corrugated metal that they had taken. I think a gang. I think that was gangs in New York. The beginning of that, <laughs> where uh, you know the guy from um, Taken showed up. That was years before his daughter was taken. That's how he learned all those fighting skills. Was in the beginning of that movie. <laughs> In 1958, on your birthday, this is a great one, Lancey. This one's for you. Uh, in 1958, United Airlines Flight 736 collided with a U.S. Air Force fighter jet over southern Nevada, resulting in the deaths of all 49 people aboard both aircraft. <laughs> oh, man. So, happy Oof. birthday. Uh, that was a, that's scary. Were you born in 1958? Uh, 57. Oh, man. That was... It's good it wasn't you, you could have been aboard that flight. Oh yeah. And I actually had uh a ticket for that and uh Eric Clapton uh was in the airport. What? And he switched me seats. And then he switched seats with uh the big bopper. <laughs> 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 that's a huge amalgamation of messed up lies. Yeah, that's a bunch of that's a series of that was like watching a child shove a bunch of Play-Dohs together of like yeah. what if I have ideas. <laughs> I was that was great. So apparently on your birthday, much in the past, uh, Simone de la Lubert was born, a French diplomat to Siam back in the, of this day, the twenty first of April, sixteen forty two. So you got good company, buddy. You got good company on your birthday. Let's say, let's say, if you're watching the show, raise a glass, please, to Lancey Joe. Cheers. Uh, happy birthday, buddy. Um, Thank you. 20, finally 21 years old. It's, it's about time. Really. We've been talking about when you've been legal, when you'd be legal for a while. You got those, um, 
you know, that whole Justin Bieber following was waiting for you to turn to an adult too. Yeah. It's a lot of people. A lot of people have been, it's a tremendous time of year. It's a uh, terrific. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tremendous. A very, I, I'm very cynical. Are you, you're not 38, are you? You're 32? I'm 30, I'm 30, I'm 34, man. 34, okay. 34, 86. I was born on February 25th, 86. I share that birthday with, uh, with, with George Harrison from the Beatles. Pretty cool. Yeah, and related to my girlfriend. I mean, we were the, what, really? Oh, wait, Laura Harrison. That makes sense. That's great. Well, I've asked. I've I've tried to get to the bottom of this with their family, and they just keep saying no. They're not related to them. <laughs> and I'm like, I need to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> we gotta know if I can get that sweet Beatles money. Yeah, I want that. I I want that money. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I think Laura. Did, are y'all related to William Henry Harrison? Great great grandfather's name is William Henry Harrison, but he was born in the year that the president died. Oh, oh god! Did you hear that? Yeah. So he was the soul of the, of the late President Harrison moved into Laura's great great grandfather's body. That's I'm a... William Henry Harrison. I died in ninety days. <laughs> I remember that tagline from his Netflix special. That was really. I was looking forward to that. That that's actually from The Simpsons. I've learned so much from The it's Simpsons. It's a great, it's a knowledgeable show. It's written by Harvard grads. Um, yeah. But, okay. So let's do this. Let's bring in our guest. Speaking of uh, of of uh, amazing and intelligent people who are going to have Netflix specials, we got our guest that we're going to bring it up on the phone. Oh God! Every time I do this, audience, uh, it's amazing. Josh Otusanya, you there, man? Of course not. Uh, hey, there he is. Uh, Josh, we got to get your audio on, man. Where are you at? Uh, let's bring Lancey back onto this thing. I got. I love it. We got you looking at your computer. <laughs> uh, you are you? You got your audio working, man? Just go and click on the uh, click on the thing, man. I think we're getting the little bits of it here and there, buddy. There we go, Lance. We got you back. Uh, let me go ahead and add this. Hey, there we go. Whoops. Bink. I'm having this is all kinds of live uh, issues. There we go. Now we got it all working. Uh, Josh, can y'all hear me? No, we can't. <laughs> I know. Let me drop you. Call right back, Josh. Go ahead and hang up and call right back, man. <laughs> i love that here's the best part of this all this has worked so well up until like right now <laughs> uh can you hear me yeah we got i got you lance i feel like this actually this whole situation has worked out and we had like zero technical difficulties last week and then just as we bring on josh mr netflix himself this whole thing starts like freaking out <laughs> Well, a lot of the, the phone lines and internet lines are uh, bandwidth is being expended because it's my birthday. <laughs> Lots of buzz going on around the cities. That's so that I mean, that's true. Let me see if I can. Especially message. Josh is in New York, right? Josh is in New York. Yeah, he's going to be coming to yeah. his live from Brooklyn, especially in my hometown. Yeah, people are really celebrating. Hey, there we go. Can we get you? No, we can't hear you. <laughs> Plug your headphones in, man. Just plug your headphones in. <laughs> oh my god. He might have that uh um uh, Brian Rowe uh, internet. Connection. Oh my god. What a ridiculous. I talked with Brian again about that yesterday. That was like one of the most I like this is what's so crazy about the situation is like the the country needs really good internet and it shouldn't be run by a company like Comcast that has like no incentive to try to make it actually work any better. Like right. internet connections in America are terrible compared with the, like China or Japan, uh, South Korea, all of these mm -hmm. other countries. They're like way better. And actually it's really funny. Uh, the audience, I don't know if it's funny. It's 
sad, kind of, but, like, the audience should know that in the city of Chattanooga, Tennessee, Chattanooga has its own socially run uh, internet service run by the city, and it has a one gigabyte, one GBPS, one gigabit per second, uh, like, bandwidth. It's, like, so fat. It runs everything so quickly, and it was just created by the town, basically. Yeah, I uh, I opened for that internet one time. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to Chattanooga? You've been down to Chattanooga? I think so. Uh, I haven't spent much time there, though. Um, I, I've, I've been to, like, Nashville uh, several times. Of course, Memphis is where I was uh, born and, and pretty much raised in Memphis, so... Yeah, uh, lots of time in Tennessee, but not a lot of time in Chattanooga. I spent a lot but, of time in Tennessee growing up. My grandparents are from from uh, well, they they're from Detroit, but they moved to Knoxville area, Sevierville, Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg area. Uh, what is Josh messaging us? He's got a uh, don't have a pair downloading on my phone. <laughs> I love that he had it on his computer, and then he he's had to download it on his phone. Anyway, he's downloading Skype on his phone. Downloading a Skype on his phone so we can. That's gonna start phone. asking his first pet's name and all this <laughs> nonsense. Is that what it does when you download it on your phone? It's it got seems these... like, especially when you're in a hurry, yeah. then it's gonna start asking all this nonsense. I mean, come on, we all know that nobody's trying to fake anybody out on the internet. That just doesn't <laughs> happen. Everybody's a hundred percent real. That's why, it, like. <laughs> Just like my dad believes, you know what I mean? That's why everything he reads online is true. That's why the coronavirus actually started in a lab in China. Everybody got it back in September. Like, <laughs> we all have immunity now. Hey, there he is. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hey. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. Josh gets up and celebrates, and we see his phone fall off the table and, like, break. <laughs> Yo, Lancey, happy birthday, man. Happy birthday. Thanks, Josh. Uh, hell yeah, man. Good to see you. Good Josh, see you too, what is, is this? Are you, you, are you living? This is your apartment? This exposed brick? Chilling, bro. This looks chilling. so nice. You know what I'm saying? We're chilling out here, man. Oh, wait, I've been in that apartment over there. before. We got a cat chilling. <laughs> <laughs> we got a cat. We got this chat. Check this cat out, dude. <laughs> That sounded like this is a little inside baseball, but that sounded like David Gavry hosting a mic in Chicago for a second. <laughs> Yo, what's up, cat? Hey, what's up, cat? How you doing? Mic. All right, cat. Awesome. Cat eat a bagel? <laughs> What'd you get on a bagel, cat? What kind, what kind of bagel did you get, cat? Okay, so for the, for, for for the listener, uh, for 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 my cousin Dustin or or Daniel uh, or. Anybody watching from Iceland, David Gavry hosted a mic at a bagel shop in Chicago. <laughs> Chicago Bagel Authority. Good Chicago time. Bagel Authority. <laughs> Josh, how is Brooklyn? Hold on, we got to ask you. Yo, how is Brooklyn, Brooklyn? Oh, go ahead. How is Brooklyn doing, man? Dude, I mean, honestly, bro, Corona, like, New York is not the spot to be right now, like, to be honest with you. That's why and, I like, got when out. I was to you, when I was talking to you, Lemon, you got the hell out. Man, I should have did that, but now I'm freaking. I might, I still might dip to like Seattle or something. We'll see. Because yeah, we my parents, my family are in the suburbs. So yeah. we were talking about that because, like, that it just was get it just got too weird, man. Too yeah. many moving trucks pulled up at uh, 7th and A and started pe people started getting shit out of their apartments. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's nuts, yo. Like, there have been like horror stories. I don't know if I told you, told you, Lemon, but. Um, one of my friend's cousins was in a grocery store, yeah. right? And someone in front of him, like, was just, just started coughing uncontrollably uh. and he passed out. And by the time the ambulance got there, dude passed dude away. Dude was dead. Corona. Yeah, dude was dead. Wait, what? Because Brooklyn got, like, seven strains of Rona, dog. Like, the <laughs> strongest. <laughs> Brooklyn, strong. Brooklyn has a mix of that European Rona and then that Chinese <laughs> Rona. And it's just moving in. Mm -mm. No, thank no, you. There's a little yeah, bit of cush in there. A little bit, a little bit of that cush. <laughs> <laughs> it's got everything in there, man. Dude, that was so bad. That was like what was going on when I was in, uh, just, this was in like 
early March, but like at the the organic food store on first and seven just around the corner that was like there was a line around the block and like so many people were like coughing in line i was like just stay home dude we don't want right (laughs) right right because they're all in denial bro dude they're all in denial i think like i i find it impossible to believe that i didn't get it i mean i'm turning into my own my own father in terms of believing these kinds of conspiracy theories because this is why i'm dressing like him but (laughs) <laughs> I, I, he's just like, I feel like I must have had it in New York. I feel like it's impossible not to have gotten it. Yeah, no, honestly, I, I'm just assuming that I've already been like, I've already had, in fact, no, the, the thing I did with that comedy central thing, mm-hmm. did I tell you about that? Tell, tell so the like, audience about it, buddy. Okay. So there was like, so they were looking for a bunch of like digital creators, so to speak. Right. So they're looking for a lot of like up and coming comedians that, could perform but also could like create content online and everything yep. and there was like a pool of like 900 comedians basically and they narrowed it down to like the top 16 for like this final audition rebecca o'neill was there which was cool to see in chicago yeah. people in the, the building um and a few others as well but um but the whole thing ended up not mattering anyway because we found we found out after that audition that someone there had like tested positive for the virus what and then the whole like lockdown and everything happened so it's it's all it's not even a thing anymore you oh yeah I mean? dude but like everything like, stopped yeah like everything stopped yeah. uh all of the i mean i'm in my day job office stuff stopped like anything that i had going with comedy with i was doing some stuff with stand up new york and all of that just all nope everything oh, had to I think it's Whoa. cool that you got into the, you know, your Comedy Central is basically going to start working with you. Um, but you've been, Josh, yeah. you've had a lot of stuff moving around. You you were involved with Netflix a little bit and then Comedy Central and some other stuff. And now you're blowing up on TikTok. <laughs> TikTok, man. TikTok, Dude, bro. You're not even a white girl doing dance instruction. How are you blowing up yet. this? <laughs> I have no idea. TikTok is nuts because it was like that was like I remember I was telling Bill because I was just post I was I just told him I'm just gonna post one video a day, man. And they were all bombing. Yeah. Like thirty six minutes just- into the show, mark it before the first time Bill Petit was mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boom, Bill Petit. <laughs> Dude, yeah, it's like all every video was bombing and Bill wasn't sold on TikTok at the time, not yet. Yeah. I was like, man, I'm going to post one a day. And I, I didn't think anything was going to happen. And then one video out of nowhere, like, just hit like a million, like, out of nowhere. Yeah. And then at that point, I was like, all right, maybe I should keep How going. many followers? You got, like, 80,000, 100,000 followers on there now? Uh, it's creeping up to 60,000. Dude, 60, what? Yeah. That's, Josh, that's yeah, nuts, man. man. Yeah, it's That's cool, so bro. many middle it's... schoolers, dude. That's so many middle schoolers who are in your <laughs> comedy. <laughs> Bro, seriously, dog. Seriously, bro. <laughs> Facts. I love that Bill, this is just funny because Bill uh, was kind of like a, he was like the Donald Trump of TikTok in the sense that like he didn't, he talked about, he was like, yeah, I don't know about TikTok. I'm a whatever about TikTok. And then when he decided that TikTok was the thing to do, he was like, oh, TikTok's always been the best. I've always said TikTok is the best. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok I mean, is great. Time, TikTok, man. amazing. Yeah, yeah, he's all about it, bro. You both should be on there too, man. I'm telling you. I because am on I mean, there. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean, though. Like yeah, all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, like comedians right now, it's like it's not like YouTube where it's so saturated that it just gets lost in there. But yep. with TikTok, if you throw a stand-up clip up there, there's a higher percentage that a clip is gonna freaking blow. Right? Oh yeah, I just put one on uh, a clip of me at the Laugh Factory. I only have like three clips on there. I put one of me at the Laugh Factory, and it got a ton of views. Yeah, it was really. Great. I was like, man, shit, I need to be doing this. Yeah, TikTok is fire, yo. It's a good, it's a good vibe, man. So what do you got? What 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 projects you got working on during this quarantine, Josh? So the only so the things I'm kind of working on right now is. It's like a lot of self development stuff. So I'm trying to trying to get fluent in French. You know Whoa. what I'm saying? I'm trying to work on Tu parles français, uh, mon ami? Yeah. Oui, on peut, on peut. Un petit peu de français, c'est cool. <laughs> c'est cool, cool it's mec. Français avec uh, Duo app, man, tous les jours. Duolingo, oui. Oui, Duolingo, yeah. Um, 
And then I'm trying to obviously TikTok post every day on that. And then I'm trying to read books more. Yeah. I realize like I've been reading a few books and I'm realizing, wow, I'm I'm just not educated. Like I'm just not as educated as I should be. Yeah. You know what I mean? What so, books like, are I you read... reading? <laughs> huh? What books are you reading? So I finished The Alchemist. I finished Rich Dad Poor Dad. Oh, yeah, I'm all reading right. and... like all the ones that I should have read already. Like Think and Grow Rich, Richest Man in Babylon, like all these random books. Oh, yeah, this is and really my- foundational entrepreneur stuff. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I'm trying to get – because I'm like, wow, I'm behind. Like I need to read more. And I want to get more into like philosophy type stuff too. Oh, man. <laughs> You've come to the right place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this Brendan, beard. hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I need to do the philosophy. I need to do like uh, drop some serious philosophy, like one hundred and one stuff. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro! Dude, philosophy is interesting. Lance, what's... Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I wasn't sure if, if did you or Bill or both of you study philosophy? We both studied philosophy, which gotcha. is why we're both such pretentious assholes. Yeah. And, uh, that's why Bill, Bill studied I... under uh, under. Brendan. Bill studied under Brendan. <laughs> He's physically <laughs> underneath. He was on under, the floor oh, beneath gotcha. me. Yeah. Just under. like Socrates and uh, and Aristotle. And... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, Bill and like Socrates. And... <laughs> right. Plato was in there. But they somewhere. all studied under Lemon, right? So like, gotcha. <laughs> I was so fucking pretentious when I was in high school. <laughs> I had a, I had a AP philosophy class and we had t-shirts made. And on the back, uh, you could have like your own nickname, and I I put Locke as in L O C K E, like John Locke, and then Hobbes, like uh-huh. Thomas Hobbes, and then I put Lemon, Locke Hobbes Lemon. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, John Locke was so dope in uh, Locks, right? Yeah, dude, it was dude, John it... Locke was a legend, yo. <laughs> <laughs> John, John Locke was Locke. a straight legend, bro. <laughs> yeah. Dude, he wrote this book. It was like y'all don't know shit about knowing shit. Yeah. Got lock, yo. Got I used to left in all of y'all. Yeah. I used that to. That still got nuts. I used that to still try got out, of, to, out of control. I used to try to have this joke about Nietzsche in my stand-up that didn't go anywhere. I should bring it back and work on it because the whole point is like all these people, like Nietzsche wrote these essays and he wrote all these essays about how he was like, uh, you guys, uh, beyond good and evil, you don't know anything about morality, yada, yada, yada. And then all of these like people wrote essays basically wow. saying, actually, turns out Nietzsche, you don't know shit because blah, blah, blah. And then he wrote an essay called uh on the genealogy of morals that was basically like oh you think that i don't know shit yeah it turns out <laughs> your words don't even know what you think they are like it was, just, it was like it was like yeah. the most kanye west like like it was just... the, the hit him up of uh philosophy yeah <laughs> Tupac, uh, Tupac. <laughs> that's why was i the... fucked your bitch <laughs> Nietzsche was the Kanye West of uh, of the of of the nineteenth century philosophy world, though, because he was like, "Y'all don't know shit. Y'all don't have nothing without me." And then he designed a shoe that caused Adidas to break a billion dollars in sales. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that should be a bit, man. That, should be, a bit. that, was that good. should be on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> and then I start dancing. Yeah. <laughs> one hand, one hand, one hand. <laughs> Do that, Roly. Oh Bro, my god, man! Have so many dances, it's nuts. Yeah, I Josh, love. Josh, uh, go you, ahead, Lance. Do you go out? Uh, sorry, uh, do you go outside? Are you able to go outside any? Uh, dude, honestly, man, not much. I would like. I don't know. I try to like quarantine a little bit but just new york is so crammed together and we're leading the freaking globe and corona so i just yeah. assume everybody has it so yeah yeah have you been so, swiping you've been on the swipe apps during this situation josh yeah dude but it's kind of a tease because like corona bro like, but there's, been a few times, <laughs> there's been a few times where i was like Man, should I risk it all right now? You know what I mean? <laughs> but, should I risk it all? I don't know, bro. Yo, girl, you been tested? 
<laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh man, that's so I you but normally you were you what is it normally like for you? I, I feel like I hear these stories and sometimes I hear them like secondhand about yeah. you about like you dating or whatever. And I'm curious like what like what is your dating life normally like in New York? Dude, it's a it's just so I, I'm like single right I'm staying single right now. That might change though. I feel like I'm ready for a relationship again. But um dude, like a lot of just like random like hookups or, or like the apps, mm-hmm. Tinder most even new york is obvious it's very fast in new york so it's like people just hook up quick move on with their lives you know new york I mean? is so. the weirdest place man it's different it's very yeah. different from it's different from chicago in the sense that it's like it's it's one of the few places i've been where if you talk to somebody on monday and yeah. you don't talk to them on tuesday by the time yeah. Wednesday comes around, it feels like you don't even remember who they are. Like you, exactly. so much shit has happened in that forty-eight hour period of time that like you don't remember who they are. You have no idea. You don't stay in touch with them. It's really weird. Exactly. And if you're in different boroughs, you might as well be in different states. Yeah. <laughs> even if it's like it doesn't even have to. Yeah, it doesn't even even not even different boroughs. Like if you are in Lower East Side Manhattan and they're on Upper West Side, it's like a, it might as well be in fucking New Jersey. Exactly. Exactly. So, how did you find your apartment, man? Because that's the next thing I want to talk about. You got exposed brick. What are you paying? Thirty-two, thirty-three hundred. Exposed brick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. Nah, so there was what happened. So I was, uh, I was crashing on my cousin's couch. Then I was looking at someone, a comic, someone we I can't remember who it was, but. Uh, there's a comic from Chicago who had moved to New York, I think. I saw it in my feed. They're like, yo, anyone know housing in New York? And someone commented this website it's called The Listings Project, yo. For any Chicago comedians listening, peep The Listings Project. And what they do is basically they just list a ton of, like, really dope housing situations, like Brooklyn, Manhattan, wherever, that are typically cheaper than going through, like, brokers and stuff. Yeah. And so I just hit them up. Found some roommates, slid in. We got we got in house washer and dryer. You got an in house washer and dryer? Yeah, we got a rooftop. It's amazing. You got a you got wait you got like a rooftop terrace. You could go up on the roof, and you have an in house washer and dryer. Yeah, bro, and I only pay eight fifty, man. So I are you pay are less, you kidding me? Dollars. Well, you're in like you're in like Bushwick though, right? Bushwick, yeah. yeah how yeah, Bushwick, how many blocks Bushwick. are you from uh from from the uh from the train? The train, uh, it's like uh, it's like a three minute walk to the train. What? That's so I'm like, it. Oh, the train station. Which stop? Yeah. What line? L. The J. J. What the fuck, yeah. dude? This is like so What's good, it? Josh. This is like the best what situation. <laughs> what happened? What stop is it? Kosciuszko. Oh yeah, when I stayed there for you remember I saw you maybe a year and a half ago. Yep. Uh, I stayed off that stop. That that's a great place you're in manhattan in no time oh yeah it's it's amazing getting into like lower east side it's like a 15 if the trains aren't delayed and stuff like 15 minutes yeah yeah dude i'm telling you josh this is the setup so what was your so so tell can you talk about the thing with netflix by the way or or is that not talk about oh yeah yeah we talk about it because it was a fun experience so what happened was randomly i got a dm from someone on instagram um, like this girl, I guess she was helping try to recruit for that show, which is kind of, it's supposed to be like reality based about dating in New York. It's yeah. on Netflix now. It's called dating around that thing. It's yeah. already out. Yeah. Um, you're in it. No. So oh. I'll tell you what happened. Oh, I got it. Okay. So, so they, so, um, I have to go through a series of questions and stuff and eventually they, they chose me for it, but they told me to like refrain from saying like, I'm like a comedian and all that stuff because I guess they did it. I guess they wanted it to seem like the everyday dude. They said lean in on like the accounting type stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. Because you're like, oh, you're a normal everyday dude just dating. There's nothing you can gain from this show type thing, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So I just did the game, and then by the time like um, it was time to shoot, which was lit because you get on set, it's like, oh, this is what it's like to be kind of like a famous dude. Where you like because the whole set they would like block out whole roads in New York for like my scenes and everything, which is lit. But it was supposed to be a reality show. 
but it's not reality, right? Yeah. So I was supposed to go on a date with this chick, and they're basically telling me what to say. But they the stuff they were having me say was just so stupid, yo. And if you watch the show, <laughs> like there, there was like a dude in there. I, I think there was like, yo, so like, how big do you like it? Like stupid stuff like that. Where if my episode aired, I feel like I would have got fired from my job. And it's like, oh, dude, God, what are you? That's for disrespectful to women. You know what I mean? Um, so I love that this reality show has given you lines to say. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I would see because I would be like, so uh, what do you do? Like, what do you do for work? They're like, cut, no, Josh, we need to ask some Angie. Like, when was the last time you had sex? And I'm like, dude, who asked that the first time you meet a chick? Like, hi, I'm Josh. When was the last time you had sex? Hi, I'm Josh. No how that. often do you fuck and how big do you like it? Exactly. <laughs> I was like, yo, that doesn't make it, but I get it for ratings or whatever. Sure, yeah. But after it was shot and everything, I left feeling like, yo, that was a cool experience, but. I kind of don't want it to come out. It's like I wanted it to come out, but I didn't want my episode as a weird mixed bag. But long story short, they so they probably filmed like tons of episodes, but they narrowed it down to like seven or something. Mm -hmm. So mine got cut. So I was actually kind of relieved because I just didn't like the character they portrayed me as in this reality setting. Got it. Um, But it was cool, though. It was a cool experience. Um, It was dope vibe and everything. Um, And it was cool to like, be in that space of like, oh, you got all these cameras and crew and like, it's pretty dope. That was pretty dope. That's pretty cool. Yeah, man, I, that's exciting, dude. I hope that hopefully they release the unreleased episodes or something, and then we can uh, check you out, being like, yo, girl, when's the last time you had sex? Like two seconds yo. after you met. Her. <laughs> you know, it's funny though. I also another thing I did for the hell of it was when we were shooting, I just like threw all of like the leaning on the accounting stuff out the window so like, i was like yeah man so i'm a stand-up comedian performing the laugh factor sometimes also did end of fringe with a bunch of people man yo follow me on instagram at this <laughs> josh Co. so anyway <laughs> like yo, follow I and subscribe josh so Dusanya on tiktok <laughs> i plugged myself so hard and they must have looked at that and be like yo this guy's really trying to be famous right <laughs> They must have seen that. Well, like, the thing that I love about you is that you look like a guy who's already famous. Like, you you look like a guy. <laughs> yeah. like That's you, flatter. I appreciate it, man. Like, if I you went to, like, that. Greece or something, people would think you were already famous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, hey, Greece would be. That's another thing I want to do. I want to travel, man. The second this corona thing is done, book tons of flights. Oh, yeah. Get the hell out, man. You gotta do do talk to uh talk to we gotta connect you with people in Europe and stuff. You can do go do comedy with them. Oh man, did Josh just drop? Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up, <laughs> hold up, hold up. I I still hear him. Can you can you see me? Yeah, there you go. If that had okay, been if, uh, that's so funny. I was half expecting and suddenly for you to come back and be shirtless like out of nowhere. Like just <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh bro, what happened to my? Sh- I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dog. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, like oiled up. In lipstick, it's written <laughs> "Follow me at" and then your Instagram. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man, uh, Josh, what other projects you you are you working on anything right now? You want people to follow you or check you out or, or any of this stuff? Yo, man. I mean, outside of personal development, even trying to write a little script, TikTok, yo. So if you want TikTok, follow your boy, Josh Otusanya. <laughs> Is it just at Josh Odusanya on TikTok? Yeah, just my name, man. Yeah, I couldn't think of anything interesting. That's fine. Why not? You got already got the best brand, dude. Why mess it up? Trying, trying, trying. Yo, Lancey, real quick, man. What have you been doing for your birthday, dog? Uh, we went and got some to-go food earlier, yeah, man. which is a huge adventure these days. <laughs> uh, it, it really wears me out when I go out now. Um like if I walk, you know, 30 feet, I'm like, oh, man, where, where the, this is quite a journey I've been on. <laughs> you got to get that face mask on and then your gloves and all that stuff. You yeah. come back, wash your hands, wash your face, bleach your clothes. Well, well we dro- I mean, Laura has a car, so we drove down there to, like, Wicker Park and mm. picked up food. And it, it seems like, I'm, you know, I'm traveling across time and space to get that far. <laughs> From from North Center. I mean, technically, um, you're technically you're traveling through space time. Is that right? I'm according space to time. <laughs> space time. Time space. Space time. 
Uh, <laughs> speaking of space time, we've had a great space time with you, Josh O2, Sonia. Josh yeah, O. Josh. Thank you. Appreciate uh, you, Josh. Follow him on TikTok, everybody. The guy's hilarious. Uh, one of my best buddies in comedy. I can't wait to, you know, we've got to be doing this uh, show soon in New York together. It'll be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can't wait. Can't uh, wait. Well, peace, man. Thank you for joining us. Take care. We will peace, talk to you soon. See you, Josh. Good Have to see you. On. Bye. Whoa, Josh O. That was a lot of fun, man. Love uh, him. He's great, man. He's so charming. He's such a nice guy. Yeah. He's like, he, uh, he's got the, he th he looks like a guy who's already famous also. Yeah. I, I look like a guy who's already, I'm trying to get a PhD in uh, the history of uh, wax museums. That's what I look like. A guy who, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> don't sell yourself short. Just regular museums. <laughs> <laughs> the history of museums. <laughs> you know, the first museum was at, in in Barcelona was actually established in that year. <laughs> By Alexandria, or Alex Alexander? Alexander the Great, actually. Well, in Barcelona, it was actually Hannibal Barca, but I'm I'm willing to forgive that. <laughs> <laughs> but I am counting off for spelling, so don't even. Uh... Don't come to me for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now Josh just messaged me thanking, talking about how great it was to have him on here. Oh, my God. This He's is so, so funny. Great. Isabel Herman, how could I have missed this comment? She was like, did you even try to brush that beard? No. <laughs> I did not try to brush the beard today. I just That beard brushed him. Yeah, man. This beard is having me at this point. This is uh, – I don't know how much longer for the world it is. I decided as a joke. I was like, I'll just keep it going through the quarantine. But now I'm like – it's taking on an entire life of its own. And the truth is that if you have a if you have a beard like this, that is your personality. It doesn't matter right. what you do beyond the beard, th th it becomes your personality. Right. I mean, it's I, like a permanent filter. <laughs> I'm still eating uh Indian food like from <laughs> That was the original filter, like the the original I Instagram uh, filter was the beard. Was just having uh, a beard. Yeah, that's true. I can't think of. I think about this now, and I think, what did people do before they had, you know, razors and things like that? You would have had. It would have been the most annoying thing in the world to just have a fucking beard all the time, all yeah. the time, all the time, from when you all were sixteen and you couldn't even shave. Forever, forever, ever, 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 ever. ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man! So, what are you having for dinner over there, man? You having a, a great birthday dinner with uh, with your lady? I think so. Uh, I heard her. It sounded I'm like she was making something. Yeah, I heard. I heard her making something. Um, everything she makes is is really good. So, she. She a lot of times she'll be like, "What do you want?" I'm like, "Anything. If you if you're cooking something, it's it's gonna be pretty good." Uh, so uh, it it might be some like since it's my birthday, she'll probably fix me some like uh, pasta or something. Yeah, that was so southern of you. She'll fix me something. <laughs> is that not right? No, in the north we say make because <laughs> that's all we do is make shit. <laughs> make we'll make cars. Like, Make, like you're the Lord. Make deal. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, there's only one person who can make anything, and that's <laughs> he who is above. <laughs> we fix stuff down here on Earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's I have a Southern grandmother, so I feel like I'm. I'm I say Southern. She's from French Lick, Indiana, so she's as close. She, which, in many ways, is more South than the South. I think. French Lick, Indiana. That's where uh, Larry Bird's from. That is where Larry Bird is from. And I heard that every freaking time I got together with my grandmother and her extended family. It was always like, my Uncle Wade is like, I say Uncle Wade, he's not my uncle, but my cousin, second cousin older than me, Wade, is like great friends with Larry Bird. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah, I had your family lineage out here i was about to be like whoa 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 you just said uncle wade i'm looking here at the graph uh i don't think that that's right wait a minute brendan oh so you got my birthday present then 
Yes. <laughs> Brendan's family tree. It's the size of my entire dining room wall. <laughs> I mean, I thought you deserved something special. <laughs> that would be hilarious for me to have uh, a, a huge um, like ancestry dot com print out of of your history <laughs> i bet does your uncle that uh does your conservative uncle think that ancestry.com is is a scam uh no i don't think well i don't know if he knows if he knows much about it to be honest like it because was... he's the one who was saying or one of your one of your family members was saying that covid is a hoax yeah that's him you got him that's the guy that's my, uh, that's the uncle that I have the uh, podcast with, which everybody should listen to. Unk Few is the name of the podcast. It's a great podcast. And, like, him and I go back and forth about a bunch of different things because I'm younger and liberal. He's older and conservative. Um, I should talk with him, actually. It's a good question to bring up on the next pod is whether or not he believes uh, in ancestry. Whether or not he believes in ancestry. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably say something like, well, we only go back so many generations because the world is only 12,000 years old. Like. Right. <laughs> and maybe aliens had sex with early men or something and No, you know what? I tell I'll tell you this about him. He's very particular about his like we just had that we just talked about this on the last podcast. He's I don't really I don't believe in like big C conspiracies. He believes in in small C conspiracies and what I it's a long story, but anyway, he believes in certain types of conspiracies, but he's very careful about like which conspiracies he believes in and so like there are some people who it's like if you start talking about like oh yeah the you know the the federal reserve right it's kind of a racket then like in the next sentence they're like well because the lizard people aliens came to the flat planet that we live on blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> my uncle is like no 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 he's like very particular like no no this is a conspiracy this other shit is bullshit he's like very okay. particular about his like you know, so I don't want to misassign to him anything that he doesn't, because I'm sure he's watching this and he's just the next podcast I get with him, he's gonna be like, "What the what the fuck? Why did you say that I believed in you know lizard people?" Or something well, I like got this. a I got a joke for him if you want to hear it. I'd love um, to hear it. Uh, you know, they say that the older you get, the more conservative you get. You've heard this yeah. probably. Yep. Um, I don't know if that's true. I just think that liberals die young AF. <laughs> You think anybody, all these, all the 27 club, you think any of them were voting for the GOP? <laughs> Hell no. Yeah, you know Kirk me. <laughs> <laughs> you down with GOP? Yeah, you know me. <laughs> the, uh, Kurt Cobain wasn't, wasn't repping the, uh, the far right. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. He would, <laughs> that's so funny. Kurt Cobain was not. He wasn't talking about, you know, von Mises and financial security. <laughs> oh, my God, man. You're not going to hear Kurt Cobain complaining about uh, uh, welfare. No. Well, these are not really concerns of young, talented musicians, unfortunately. What yeah, we but need... they're all liberal, I promise you. <laughs> it's going to be weird to see what pop music becomes in a covid post covid 19 world you know what i mean this whole thing is a bit it's kind of strange uh yeah uh, hopefully it gets better <laughs> I, you can tell i'm getting older first of all i'm i'm 38 now i just woke up in this tie i didn't even put this on um, you have a pension then, suddenly yeah what is this what are these letters i'm getting from the government <laughs> Apparently, I've been, yeah, I've been trading stocks for 10 years now. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> you down with AARP? Yeah, you know me. <laughs> so I can't do that joke another time. Couldn't even really do it that time. Uh, <laughs> Lancey Joe, happy birthday, man. We should wind up on the uh, the happiest hour with uh, saying cheers and happy birthday again to to Lancey Joe, the greatest New York comic who is uh, the king of comedy in, in Chicago. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm glad we started doing this, man. We're a week in. Feels like it's become a real thing. We got a lot of, we get a lot of views. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, we get a I lot saw of views. That. 
it's a uh, it's a good time. So uh, when are you going live later with your show, or are or are you not? Is that your birthday gift to yourself? Is that you're taking an evening with Laura? No, I think uh, I think I'm going live per Laura's request. She needs that time. <laughs> That's so, I feel, I feel like the same is true with maybe Gloria over here. Um, let me tell you this. Oh man. yeah, you you said you were gonna get a uh, a prostitute for me, and then you're gonna have Gloria Son come in bitch. dressed. Yeah, that's dressed right. Up. That's right. I should have. Ah, uh, man, I'm at halfway time to the caller, but it's just but, too late. But never talk but I've already me. ruined the joke, though. Obviously, I mean, uh, whatever. Uh, there's never been a joke that I haven't ruined and yet delivered. So I'm not, I'm, I'm unfazed by this. <laughs> uh, but Lancey, what time are you going live? People can check you out and follow. Probably, uh, probably eight or eight fifteen tonight. Ah, oh, got it. Eight, eight fifteen. Perfect. It depends on how long my Grand Theft That's Auto missions run tonight. S- Central time. Here we are once again at the Madness Continues wrapping up at six thirty Central, seven thirty Eastern, twelve thirty a.m. GMT. Uh, well, thank you so much, Lance. Oh, it's great. We'll see you here tomorrow, man. Have fun on your show this evening. And uh, take it easy, man. See you soon. Take care.